Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today we'll be going through a practice question related to the integumentary system, specifically integumentary interventions. But before we get to that, just a quick reminder about joining our crash course. So three weeks before every test day, we run a fresh crash course cohort with the entire goal being that we go through all the content you need in order to dominate those last three weeks as you head into test day. So almost always as you're heading into the last few days uh, right before the test, it's it's a super pain. You're going through tons of content, trying to know what is likely to be tested, uh, especially in those big three systems, cardio, muscular, and neuro. Let us help you out. We'll take the stress out of it. Uh, plus, it's super economically priced. I think you'll really enjoy it. Check it out over at ptfinalexam.com where you can find all the course offerings we have to get you ready for the NPTE. So today we'll be talking through the integumentary system. So this system on the exam, it's uh, it's certainly one of the smaller systems of the exam, only nine to 12 questions on the FSBPT content outline that's valid through 2023. But that being said, it is one of the more vexing topics that many students have troubles with. So I wanted to talk through a practice question related to that. Uh, hopefully this helps, especially considering burns and burn positionings. I think you'll really enjoy that. So as per our usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about the answer together. So a patient with a full thickness burn injury to the shoulder and axillary region of the right upper extremity is being treated in an inpatient setting. Which of the following therapeutic positions of the right shoulder is most appropriate? So again, a patient with a full thickness burn injury to the shoulder and axillary region of the right upper extremity is being treated in an inpatient setting which of the following therapeutic positions of the right shoulder is most important? Abducted to 100 degrees, abducted 45 degrees, horizontally adducted 30 degrees, full abduction and 45 degrees lateral rotation, arm at side, laterally rotated 90 degrees. So again, those options are abducted to 100, abducted 45, horizontally adducted 30, full abduction and 45 degrees lateral rotation, arm at side, laterally rotated 90 degrees. So the principle or the premise of this question is identifying that there are some therapeutic position considerations after a burn, especially considering the contractures that are likely to show up after some type of severe burn. So a full, thick, full thickness burn, you're likely to see some severe scarring. So that scarring can create joint contractures preventing movement or motion around a joint that you would desire. So limiting range of motion essentially. So the key here is that for therapeutic positioning, you'll want to keep the keep the patient around 90 to 110 degrees of, of abduction. So the correct answer here is that option number one, abducted 100 degrees. So all things considered, you'll want to keep the patient in somewhat a somewhat abducted position. And the reason is, again, you don't want the scar tissue to contract the joint, thus preventing adequate range of motion of the shoulder. Now, again, this is all according to, to Goodman's pathology, but the premise is you need to have them in a somewhat comfortable position. So you'd not want to have them in full abduction and likely the skin would not be able to tolerate that full abduction. Uh, but you do want them in adequate abduction so they don't get a, a contracture in the axillary region. So again, the target position here is somewhere between 90 and 110 degrees of abduction. Uh, it doesn't describe any particular requirement for external rotation. Uh, rather, they, they typically describe that you want to have some type of trough or supporting device for the upper extremity, often splinting the elbow, preventing it from, from being contracted as well. So a lot of times this is called the airplane splint if you have it bilaterally, where you have both hands or both arms abducted to 90 degrees. That being said, it looks a little bit like you're pretending to be an airplane, so the airplane splint, so to speak. Uh, these other options that are incorrect, so abducted 45 with horizontal adduction 30 degrees, that is indeed the open pack position of the shoulder. However, we're not talking about a capsular issue, rather with this burn or this integumentary issue, obviously we're talking about skin and skin contractures that can result in a decrease in range of motion. Uh, these other incorrect answers, so full abduction, 45 external rotation, or the arm at side, external rotation to 90, both of these don't adequately describe the abduction required for someone with an axillary burn. So again, the key consideration is that you have uh, some type of, of severe burn, which will result in scarring, 
And so in order to prevent joint contractures, you have to position the patient so as to avoid uh, letting the scar contract the contract the joint into position. So other examples of this would be like with the neck. So let's say you had a burn on the front of your neck. You would want to avoid neck flexion positioning. So therefore you hold the patient in in a slightly extended or neutral position. So thus you avoid using a pillow in the case of a patient who has a neck, uh, some type of anterior neck, neck burn, simply because that could create a neck flexion contracture. Uh, similarly for the hip, same thing that if you had a, a burn on the front of the hip, you'd want to maintain the hip in extension or at least neutral in order to prevent a hip flexion contracture. Uh, those are probably the biggest ones you'll see. Elbow, so if you have a, a burn to the anterior surface of the elbow, you'll want to keep the elbow in extension. Again, preventing the skin from being contracted during its prolonged, uh, during its its healing process, which will invariably lead to some scarring if it's a deep partial thickness or a full thickness wound. So those are the considerations. Another interesting consideration is that active range of motion is, is suggested every two hours while the patient is awake, again, to prevent the, the contracture of the joint. Uh, the only exception to that would be if there was skin grafting that needed to be immobilized for a certain period of time so that the skin graft could take so to speak, is could actually graft into place. But that being said, you as a PT, you'll be, you'll be heavily involved in positioning of the patient and then the frequent therapeutic exercise to prevent joint contractures with the patient. So there you go. Handful of questions on the test about the integumentary system. Uh, this one talking about integumentary interventions. Be sure to check out all the other episodes we've got on the NPT podcast. And if you haven't yet, it only takes a sec. Just, just scroll down to the bottom. Give us a five-star review. Really helps as we're trying to get the word out about the NPT podcast. And I'll catch you all in the next episode. Happy studying, everyone. Will Crane fist pumps all around. And I'll catch you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.